Fox Guts. Hey YouTube, welcome back to the channel. It's a Saturday here, and off the success of our last couple of videos around top five mods and all the rest of it, we thought we'd show you a bit more of a controversial video around top five worst mods for your Commodore VF and VE platform. Because I tell you what, here at Clooney Garage, we've seen it all. Um, and some of the, the speed shop we go to to get our race cars fixed at, you should see the abominations that turn up. Some of them are downright embarrassing. So we want to make sure that you guys and girls on the channel don't fall into the same trap as all these mistakes and actually save your money on the things that will actually make a huge difference. So on the channel, we're all focused about performance out of your VE and VF Commodore. This is not a channel, if you like, bling and, you know, parking in car spaces and looking at, you know, slammed life and having your stereo pumped up. That's not us at all. Um, we're all about having an awesome car, going to the racetrack, having a heap of performance on a budget as well and getting the most performance you can out of your platform. So on today's video, we'll go through our top five and uh, some of them are a bit entertaining and we'll have some pictures as I talk. Check this out. All right, number one, bit of a pet topic for me and Frankie, and that's the exhaust of your Commodore. So what we're going to talk about here is bigger is not always better, and straight through pipes and cat deletes are definitely not the way to go. So the actual, the optimum size for like a six litre platform Commodore, something like this little thing here, is actually a twin two and a half inch. You don't need a massive big twin three inch system and knock your cats out and you know have straight through mufflers and race pipes and all this sort of stuff in fact you can get a fairly basic you know twin two and a half inch mandrel bent system something like this this is the rear end obviously um and don't knock the inside of your mufflers out and don't delete your cats um that's what all these young players do all this stuff and they reckon it sounds great and straight piped and all that you'll get a massive fine from the police you'll get a massive fine from the epa and the other thing is you go to wakefield or a racetrack and you'll actually get black flags is too loud. So, and actually, it sounds like ass. So, whatever you do, don't try and fit the biggest exhaust you can to your car. Fit the exhaust and headers that are actually tuned and actually make your car perform the way it should. Um, these exhausts are actually designed to have some back pressure. And that actually, if you actually don't have any back pressure, you will rob your engine of power. So, step number one, don't get the wrong exhaust. Don't have straight through life. Step number two, so for all you people that like your big 20, 22 inch wheels, this one's going to be a bit disappointing because Frankie and I have found out that actually smaller is better when it comes to wheels as well. And when it comes to VE and VF Commodores, the magic number is 18 inches. Don't go and get 20 inch wheels and so on. And the reason is you will not be able to go and put your hands on the world's best semi-slick tyre for your Commodore. There's a reason these come out in 18s. That's the optimum size for performance. You get the right size sidewall and you won't start, you know, hitting guards and all the rest of it. So this is a bit controversial here, but our point here is 20 inch wheels look great on a car trailer. They look terrible on the track and they perform like ass as well. So if you ask Frankie, he's actually put 20 inch wheels, uh, Simmons on his Falcon. It's the worst thing he's ever done. Drives around like a bag of marbles. The tyre choices are terrible. He's got these really thin licorice sort of strips on them. It rains, he can't drive the car. So what we're saying here is get the right size rims and tyres your car. And we reckon 19s at the most, but 18s if you can. That's going to be controversial. Leave your comments below. Let us know what you think. All right, if you think talking about 20 inch wheels is controversial, this next one is my pet hate. Oh God. Non-functional aerodynamics. Oh God. You should see what we've seen before. We've seen absolute abominations. Cardboard, masonite, plastic, fiberglass, um, Bunnings garden edging strapped to the side of the side skirts. I mean, you can't make this stuff up, honestly. Um, when it comes to aerodynamics on a VE, VF platform, look at the V8 supercars. You get yourself a big, decent front splitter. Not that we've fitted ours, but it obviously down the front here and actually get some air aerodynamics on the front. On the rear, get like a V8 supercar rear spoiler, if this is what you're into. And then obviously invest in 
a rear diffuser. And this is all about dispelling all the dirt here at the back of the car. It's about maximizing aerodynamics at the front of the car and getting reduced drag. And the actual downforce we're talking about is so you can actually get grip, more pressure onto the tire and, and grip into the corners and help your braking. If you're driving your car around the street, you don't need any of those things. Um, if anything, it's going to be um, a bit of police bait. And the other thing, it's just seriously not functional. And um, you should see some of the things we've seen. I mean, that one about the Bunnings garden engine, oh, it um, makes me smile every time I see it. But anyways, make sure that any performance modification you do to your car is actually oriented around the goal that you have in mind. Again, if you're into the show car scene and going to car shows and parking the car and all the rest of it, these worst mods probably aren't for you. This is about performance. So functional aero, and if anything, professional aero. And if I show you what I mean, the actual, um, some of the Japanese manufacturers have actually got this down pat. And what I mean by this is you actually get functional aero that's been tested in a wind tunnel. So this is off a, uh, a Civic, and that's on the, um, obviously just below the roof line there. And that's actually been aerodynamically tested around reducing the dirty air and dispelling it off the, the back of the car. But that's what we're talking about when we talk about functional aero. All right, another one of my pet hates, car sound systems, honestly. If you like your music and all the rest of it, get your AirPods in, go home, go to your lounge room. Don't spend money on your car stereo. In fact, we live and die by this little rule. Our race car gets removed. Our VE NASCAR, removed. A couple of reasons for this. One, it's downright bloody distracting having a stereo going when you're trying to race around a car. Um, the other thing is, these things weigh a heap. Um, they can drain your battery. Um, and it's, it's just not in the ethos of having a performance-oriented car when you can't hear the thing. When you're in this car and you're howling around, you want to hear everything. And, um, I mean, I used to have a stereo when I was a much younger lad. And I'll tell you what, my driving would suffer dramatically when I was going around with the stereo on. and Because you lose all your human natural connection to the car. So, for us, in the bin... All right, number five on our worst mods, and it's not really a mod, but it's definitely something that you do to your car, so I suppose it could classify as a mod, and that's the having the wrong maintenance routine and using cheap suboptimal parts. So when we're talking about parts, we're talking about brake pads. So, you know, we would go anything with these sorts of things at the, the lower end, these sorts of things at the top end for our brake pads. Again, this is more when you're track oriented. That's more sort of day-to-day -day spirited driving. When it comes to your brake fluid, you know, don't scrimp. Get something that's high temperature. Have a look in your, you know, your super cheap catalogue around what filters you need. Those seem to work for us. And when it comes to oils and all that sort of stuff and your actual air filters, don't go and whack on a big air pod and have it sucking in cold air in the engine bay. Stick with your panel filter if you've got the OEM set up with your VEVF. If not, you go over the, over the radiator and you can get the you know some fairly decent... You know, panel filters in there too. But again, it's just all about not scrimping on the, the consumables because you're going to be going through a lot of these in your car. And, and again, these are fairly cheap things to do. But again, don't, you know, don't chimp out of that last little moment there because these things will come home to roost. I mean, you don't want to be down the main side of Wakefield and have, uh, you know, the foot go to through the floor. Speaking of track days, we're heading out on Monday. So we can't wait. So Black Betty our VE Ute heading back to the track and um, we've done a heap of things since you know we've been last talking to you on the channel about it our rotors are in our brake pads are going in tomorrow um, we've had our coilovers fitted they're in we've got our brand new Nankang semi-slick tyres from a driver restraint perspective we've got our six point harness in so we're ready to go how good's that? All right, on that note, little Cavalier and I will sign off. The Audi's about to take off, and we're gonna get ready for our track day 